Hi, welcome to global versus local p-values. So many scientific results are reported in terms of p-values. If you look through the scientific literature, you might run across two different terms, a local p-value and a global p-value. Here, we're going to discuss the difference between these two quantities and to do that, we're going to use an example that involves radioactive decays. At the very end of the video, we'll also relate these two quantities to something called the look elsewhere effect. Now, there is some background knowledge that's going to be assumed in this video. So we're going to be talking about p-values. If you don't know what a p-value is, you might be interested in the video, What's a p-value? available on this channel. Also, the example that we're going to do is going to involve the Poisson distribution. If you're not familiar with the Poisson distribution, you might be interested in the videos in the Poisson statistics playlist. Also, we're going to be talking a bit about hypothesis testing and the look elsewhere effect. So you might be interested in checking out the videos in the hypothesis testing playlist, as well as the video, why the look elsewhere effect is important. Okay, so now let's think about an imaginary scenario. So let's say that you work for a company that makes radioactive samples for educational purposes. These samples have a very specific composition and size, such that they will have, on average, 20 radioactive decays per minute. Now, the actual number of radioactive decays that will be observed from a sample in a given time interval is probabilistic, and those probabilities are given by the Poisson distribution. So let's say that you work in quality control. You decide that you're going to take one sample, measure the number of decays it produces in a single one minute interval, and use this to judge if the production line is working correctly. Okay, so you do the measurement and you get seven decays in the one minute interval. Here's our question. What's the p-value of this result? Okay, so radioactive decays follow the Poisson distribution. This means that the probability of observing n events when, on average, lambda are expected is given by what we call p of n given lambda, which is equal to lambda raised to the power of n e to the minus lambda divided by n factorial. In our example here, lambda is equal to 20. So the probability to observe n decays is equal to 20 to the n e to the minus 20 divided by n factorial. So here we show the Poisson distribution for lambda equal to 20. In a given one minute interval, you expect, on average, to see 20 radioactive decays. However, as we can see from the plot, the probability that you'll see exactly 20 decays, for example, is about 0 0.09, and the probability that you'll see, say, 15 decays is about 0 0.05. Okay. So you did the measurement and got seven decays in a one minute interval. To get the p-value of your result, we ask the following question. If this experiment were repeated many, many times, under the null hypothesis, in what fraction of experiments would you get a result as extreme or more extreme than the one you actually observed when you did the experiment? So here, the null hypothesis is the hypothesis that everything with production is working correctly and thus 
that lambda is equal to 20. Okay, so you did the experiment and you observed seven decays. Now this is 13 fewer than the mean lambda, which is equal to 20, that was expected under the null hypothesis. Now the p-value is the probability under the null hypothesis to have a result as extreme or more extreme than your observed result. Here, extreme means far away from 20. So that means that we want the probability under the null hypothesis to observe a number of decays that is 13 or more away from 20 in either direction. So we want the probability to observe seven or fewer or 33 or more decays. So in order to get our p-value, we add up the Poisson probabilities for n equals zero to seven and n equals 33 to infinity. Now, if we were to add up the Poisson probabilities between zero and infinity, we would get one. So an easier way to do this sum is to take the sum from n equals eight to n equals 32 and then subtract that from one. So we get that our p-value is equal to one minus the sum over n from eight to 32 of 20 raised to the n power e to the minus 20 over n factorial. This is approximately equal to one minus 0 0.9945, which is equal to 0 0.0055. So that means that our p-value is approximately equal to 0 0.0055. Okay, so, so far we've just gone through the usual procedure for calculating a p-value. Now, in order to explain the difference between a local and a global p-value, let's change the scenario slightly. Now, this scenario is just like the first one, except that this time, every day you choose one sample and test it. And you're going to do this for a month, so for 30 days. Also, the machines that make the samples are reset each day, so the presence of a quality control issue on one day does not affect the other days. Now, here we plot the number of decays n that was observed on each of the 30 days. And we've put a horizontal line at 20 to indicate the average expected under the null hypothesis. So that's lambda equal to 20. So this time, the largest deviation on any day from the null hypothesis expectation of 20 is a single day where there are seven decays. This happens on the second of the 30 days. Let's define the local and global p-value for the day two result. Okay, so to get the local p-value, we ask the following question. If this experiment were repeated many, many times, under the null hypothesis, in what fraction of experiments would you get a result as extreme or more extreme on day two than the one you actually observed on day two? Now to get the local p-value for the day two result, we don't use the information about the other days. We only ask how unusual it is under the null hypothesis to have a result as extreme or more extreme on day two. This is the same calculation as the one we already did. 
so the local p-value is approximately equal to 0 0.0055. Now, to get the global p-value, we ask the following question. If this experiment were repeated many, many times, under the null hypothesis, in what fraction of experiments would you get a result as extreme or more extreme on any of the 30 days than the one you actually observed on day two? Okay, so on any single day, under the null hypothesis, the probability to have a less extreme result than what you saw on day two is one minus the local p-value for day two, which is approximately one minus 0 0.0055, and that's 0 0.9945. As the different days are all independent, the probability that all 30 days have a less extreme result than what you observed on day two is thus approximately 0 0.9945 raised to the 30th power. And that's equal to about 0 0.85. Okay, so the probability under the null hypothesis that none of the 30 days has a result as extreme or more extreme than what you actually observed on day two is about 0 0.85. This means that the probability that at least one of the 30 days has a result as extreme or more extreme than what you observed on day two is one minus this, so approximately one minus 0 0.85 and that's equal to 0 0.15. So this is the global p-value for the day two result. So if you do the test on a single day and see only seven decays, your result is rather unusual under the null hypothesis. So it had a p-value of 0 0.0055. But if you do many of these tests, the global p-value might indicate that your result is not unusual at all under the null hypothesis. Here, with 30 tests, approximately 15% of the time, at least one day will have a result this extreme. So the difference between the global and local p-values is called the look elsewhere effect. If you do a large number of tests, chances are you'll get some unusual looking results just by chance. The global p-value takes this into account. Okay, so let's just give a brief summary. Here we've looked at the difference between local and global p-values. The global p-value takes into account the look elsewhere effect in a set of results. So for more information, you may wish to check out the video, Why the Look Elsewhere Effect is Important.